It's round three of the Qatar Masters and things are getting spicy, both on and off the board. And the off the board stuff is related to the on the board stuff. But I'm not gonna go into all that. Do your own research if you want to. We're focusing on chess today. Now Magnus Carlsen was playing with White, looking to bounce back from his terrible loss yesterday to a 2500 in about 31 moves. Here he was going for an international master who had the name of, or has the name of, sorry, A.L. Mutaya. Another player from India. Where else, right? This tournament is full of strong Indian players. Powerhouse of chess right now. So Magnus kicks off with E4. No messing about with weird openings today. We get E5, Knight F3, and Knight F6. His opponent looking to suck the life out of the game with the Petrov, or Russian defense. Reputation for being rock solid. Now after takes, the main move for white is D4. But Magnus goes for this quirky sideline, drives the knight back, and then goes D4. He's very familiar with these positions because he had to try and break this opening down against Fabiano Caruana 2018 World Chess Championship match. And he wasn't successful. Now here, black has a choice. You can go D5 and then put the bishop here. Or you can do this, with a bit, which is a bit more interesting. And by the way, why did uh, white spend two tempos? where well, you drove the knight back, so you did gain something through that. So now bishop d3, we get bishop g7, both players castle, and after pawn h3, this bishop here is struggling for good squares along this diagonal. You know, if you put it on e6, you're running into maybe this, you're going to block the rook. So we see pawn b6, natural move. Now c4 from Magnus, you know he has a small edge, he has the space, also the extra move of course with white. He goes bishop b7, knight c3, rook e8 played, and now you can go rook e1, very boring, very dry, start swapping pieces, but Magnus wants to keep tension, so he plays Sorry, got distracted there. My wife's got a new watch and it just caught my eye, like really put me off. Back to the game here. Um, so Magnus plays bishop e3. He wants to keep pieces on the board, keep tension. And after knight b to d7, the next move, rook e1, h6, and then d5 is also very natural because you've now freed the d4 square. You can sit a minor piece there in future, especially this bishop could do quite nicely there. But when you made that push, you did weaken these squares, of course, blunted this bishop though, so pros and cons of the move. So black immediately pounces, hits the light squared bishop. Magnus tucks it back. And now good move from black, trying to break out. If you sit there too long, you know, something like bishop d4 is coming. So we see c6 played. Now white can take here and still keep an advantage because you've got a better pawn structure. You can target d6. But in doing this, you liberate this bishop. That's a great diagonal. More support given to the e4 square as well. The knights can start hopping. This bishop opens up. You know, black gets play. So Magnus goes for queen d2. He wants to keep this bishop squashed in on this square, make it redeploy or something. And now interesting play from black. You can go king h7, just defend this pawn. But then bishop d4. B4 is coming soon. G4 is a nice squeezing move. And white's got the E4 square under control. So black decides, you know what? I want to play energetically here. I'm going to jump a knight into F4. Sorry, E4. We now see these ones exchanging. Magnus gives up the bishop pair, but it's because he can then win this pawn. He's a pawn up. But after this liquidation and this capture here, here the pawn is now won back. However... White's still for choice here because black's got the compromised pawn structure and this can get quite trickier than this as we're going to see. So knight d4 initially played. You don't want to get your structure smashed up. Now queen f6 hits that knight. We see queen d2 defending and now a great move by black activating all the pieces. You don't want to take this pawn or b3 and the bishop's actually trapped. First, you'd go rook d1 to defend this knight, then you'd win it, and actually white has the time to do that. 
So the pawn not touched, rook c8 played, and it's a great move because if white goes for knight b5, natural looking idea to hit this bishop, target this pawn, target this pawn. Well, then after rook c5, knight takes, sorry, knight c3 is best. If knight takes, well, actually, this knight's getting a bit trapped. Bishop b7, the knight's got no retreat squares. Yes, you can go a4, but then the rook swings. f3, the bishop crashes through. You know, this is technically a drawn position, apparently, because you can create this pin. But black getting huge counterplay. So Magnus, no knight b5. He goes a3. Now we see a6, taking away the square. And this is really nice chess. Magnus wants to re-maneuver this knight but he starts with rook e3, activates that piece, so that after king g7, now knight e2, you know, the rook's not here, there's no, say, rook e1, uh, e8 coming to create pins or whatever, really nice harmony. So bishop c4 played, hits that knight, knight g3, you want to preserve it, knight e4 threatened, and it's interesting, when you run it with the engine, they wanna go bishop e6, essentially just ditch this pawn and play for peace activity. But black goes d5, natural idea to take away this square. But now b3 kicks the bishop, a4, it drops back and knight e2. And you've got this classic situation of good knight against bad bishop because this one now is forever gonna have its scope hampered by this pawn, white's about to blockade and the pawn could later be weak and dropping off the board. So we see bishop e6, knight d4, a5 played. Look at the clock situation as well. Magnus putting the heat on. King h2, check, g3, uh, queen back, king g2. The bishop drops to d7, preparing to exchange rooks. And now Magnus could be a bit shuffly here. You know, rook f3 is one move, or rook e1, the computer says. But he goes g4, third top move. Nice idea to create more of a squeeze. We see the rooks come off the board, but still some of the problems persist with this good knight, isolated pawn. Queen e3 now played, hits the bishop, probes the b6 pawn. Bishop d7, knight f3 from Magnus, and now here, the position is roughly level. Even though black's got the weakness, white's got all the long-term pressure and can keep probing up on the clock, it's still technically within the drawing territory. You know, you usually need two weaknesses, not just one, to kind of create a winning advantage. But this next move is a mistake. Bishop c6 played. Looks so natural because you threaten d4, hitting the queen, unleashing the bishop on this, really, really bad. You know, that's why you can't take, now you're literally losing. But the problem with this move is you can play g5, kick the queen, and then take the pawn. And this time the tactics aren't working. And going back to where black made the blunder, that's why the bishop shouldn't have gone to c6. The queen should have come to d6 straight away, cover this pawn, stay covering this pawn, roughly level. The problem now with d4, which does come on the board, is that the queen isn't on f6, immediately attacking the knight, and so Magnus, he gains a move here. Also, this queen is undefended. This is the trick. So now Magnus finds the only move to keep a winning advantage. Can you find what it is here? <clears throat> so the move that Magnus plays is king to f1. Very important that it goes to f1 and not g1 because you have to stay close enough to this pawn. Now, for example, if d3 is pushed, well, you can go check, swap the queens off, that's forced, the knight's on the bishop, and the point here is that if the pawn ever pushes, well, the king is close enough to get it. If the king was on g1 in this variation, you'd be in trouble. So that's why pawn pushing is no good. You can't take the knight, your queen drops off the board, and equally, there's no discovered check to win the queen because the queen just captures. Everything working out for Magnus. So what to do, the pawn's gonna drop, you can't kick it on, so black just steps back away from the check, the pawn still drops, still no time to take the knight, of course, the queens are facing off, so black keeps the queens on the board, correct idea. Now, queen e7 should have been played so that in the event of knight e5, there's queen takes on g5, and then also if the knight takes here, there's queen c1 check at the end, picking back the piece. 
That was black's best try. But queen e6 played, very natural, targeting the undefended pawn. But Magnus, brilliant chess, doesn't try and defend it. He activates that knight, hopping into the game. The pawn drops with check. The king sidesteps. Black plays the most natural move. You'll see the evaluation bar reacts because the computer wants bishop f3. But they go check, really natural, drive the king up also protects the bishop, now bishop f3, threatening this check down here, but classy stuff from Magnus, he ignores that threat and goes knight d7. He's rotating into f6, and knight queen plus pawn is just too deadly for this king. We get check, the king steps up, attacking the bishop. If the queens come off, well it's no good. The end game is lost, uh, lost after king recaptures, and this one is marching over you know, black can't save that. So we see the queen take the pawn with check. King f4 played. Bishop c6 hits that knight, but it hops with check. King g7, knight h5, double check. The king steps back, and after queen d6 check, king g8, queen d8 check, we see resignation. Because if the king steps to h7, there's knight f6 check, the king goes here, and this delivers the mate. So this the final position. Magnus does bounce back. He's a bit rocky at the moment, but he's steadied the ship with this good win. Classic Magnus style. I hope you enjoyed. Do check out the video on screen if you want to see another epic game of chess. And I hope to see you again soon. Thanks very much for watching.